and they seized cases Bro. and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs. More Johnson than 1,000 bottles altogether. The truth is the light. Amen, amen. Gee. But what Diddy's scheme was all about was getting rappers to do gay stuff on camera, though they did not know it, so that he had blackmail on them so that he could kind of control them and thereby control the whole music industry. Personally, I didn't trust this guy after he had Tupac. That was the red flag for me. I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you gosh. got to tell him no. Quote, Mr. Combs, Diddy, went so far as to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concerning home. According to Diddy, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Diddy informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper Redacted, R&B singer Redacted, and Stevie J. Yes, Diddy's having gay multi-gay and using it to try to get homie to have more gay because that's what he's all about. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he did gay stuff. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr., yes, that actor Cuba Gooding Jr., sexually assaulted, harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. Yes, here are photos of Cuba doing the things. Here's more photos of Cuba Gooding Jr. trying to fuck this guy, quote, forcibly touching Mr. Jones, fondling Mr. Jones' leg, his upper inner thighs, and his groin, the small of his back, near his buttocks, and his shoulders. Jones rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away, following the screenshot. Homie witnessed a shooting where either Diddy or his brother shot a dude in the bathroom and then got the cops to just totally not prosecute, not investigate, say it was a drive-by, they drove away. Diddy maintained this RICO enterprise by using threats of violence, threatening to eat his face, displaying and distributing in plaintiffs present, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about people and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 New York City nightclub shooting was shine. Are you getting the picture yet? And it would appear that one of the ways that Diddy had law enforcement under control was through his chief of security, Fahim Muhammad, who the whole staff was allegedly told to contact if anything ever went wrong with police or law enforcement, and he would be the fixer that would make it all disappear. Well, Fahim Muhammad is the former head of security for Michael Jackson. This kid had just graduated college with like a business degree and he became the head of security for the King of Pop at age 21 or 22. And then whoopsies, that same year, head of Pop died. This guy was second on the scene. And then his very next job after failing was to become the head of Diddy's entire operation. Think about it. The head of security in a blackmail ring needs to know all the dirt. Otherwise, he's not securing Diddy formed his record label in the first place with a lot of help, basically being selected by Clive Davis, who's got a lot of mob ties and other stuff in his history. But he's been running huge portions of the music industry for w before we were all born. We're talking back to signing names originally like Janis Joplin, Pink Floyd, Aerosmith, Earth, Wind & Fire. I say all of that to just show you the scope that this is not just one rapper doing bad things. This is the whole music industry. He's not going to last very long. He's going to squeal like a fucking pig. And there's an awful lot of powerful people that cannot have that. So watch out for the Epstein treatment. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. If oh, you really? Have one, yeah. Wow. Okay, I've got a lot. I can't tell. <laughs> so, um, I can't tell that one either. <laughs> I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. Feel like well, I'm... we still have some time to go. You know, I can blow it here. Okay. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Diddy party stories. Man, that was like some weird memory lane. So. But you know what the craziest part about this whole thing is? There's still rappers out there who would gladly let P. Diddy bone them for a little fame. And I guarantee you that the FBI is not going to be releasing all those tapes of all those celebrities and politicians and powerful executives that he has blackmail on. They're keeping that shit locked down because that's how they do. Status quo. So key takeaways. All the music you listen to is fucking fake. They're promoting bad artists that they can blackmail so they can control them so they can keep running their fucking scheme and they can give you awful messaging think about the messaging and all of the artists that people like diddy have promoted guns violence hoes drugs that's not authentic that's being promoted by a blackmail ring in the music industry <laughs> All the champagne was spiked, son. Like, all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the fuck out. I don't drink. I don't drink, so I was playing that shit off like I don't fucking drink. I smoke, nigga. 
Like, I smoke and I had my own weed, but, like, everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the fucking door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the fuck was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against ass cheeks. I heard niggas struggling to take I heard niggas being like, yeah, daddy. Like, when, when, I, when, when he started calling, all that daddy this and daddy that, and then I heard some hollering and struggling. Like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all this shit. <laughs> on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for the indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victim to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video, captured on multiple cameras, shows Combs assaulting his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. Oh, you've got to tell him no.